What's up guys, Everyday I Tech here, and on November 12th, iOS 26.2 Beta 2 is released a lot earlier than we expected. So today, we have a very comprehensive look on what's new, changes, and features. Let's get started. Now, before I start, I will not be repeating any of the features that I mentioned in my last iOS 26.2 Beta 1 video, just so it's not repetitive and everything that you guys see in these new update videos is new information. All right. So alongside iOS 26.2 Beta 2, Apple also released iPadOS 26.2 Beta 2, MacOS 26.2 Beta 2, TVOS 26.2 Beta 2, VisionOS 26.2 Beta 2, and WatchOS 26.2 Beta 2. All right, so in settings general software updates, the iOS 26.2 Beta 2 comes in at 1.62 gigabytes, and it states iOS Beta gives you an early preview of upcoming apps, features, and technologies please back up your iPhone before you install. For more information, please visit one of the following programs, Apple Beta Software Program. And if you tap on the link, it talks about what you will be a part of if you enroll in the Apple Beta Software Program. And then it says Apple Developer Program. And if you tap on this link, it'll bring you to developer.apple.com. And if you tap on the hamburger menu on the top left, you can sign up to become an Apple developer and beta test the new softwares as well. All right, so in iOS 26.2 Beta 2, we do not get a welcome screen and unlocking our iPhone, if we tap on settings, general, about, and iOS 26.2, here is the build number for iOS 26.2 beta 2. Anyways, on iOS 26.2 beta 1, right before updating, I had 474.78 gigabytes of available space. Now, after updating, I do have a little bit less at 473.82 gigabytes available. So close to one gigabyte less space after updating from beta 1. All right, now I found that with airplane mode enabled, with apps that need connecting to the internet, the pop-up notification looks a bit different on every iOS. So here it is on iOS 26.1. You guys can see that it takes up the entire upper portion of the display and shows when it was last updated. Now moving on to iOS 26.2 beta 1, it no longer takes up the entire upper portion of the display. It's now a rounded notification. It shows when it was last updated and it has an X to dismiss. It. Now, fast forward to iOS 26.2 beta 2. It simply shows airplane mode is on. It does not show when it was last updated and it does not have an X to dismiss it. Not sure if this is a bug or they're making it more simplified. On Apple CarPlay, pinned messages now have the option to be disabled separate from your iPhone. Additionally, the issue with apps becoming unresponsive, freezing, and crashing has been fixed. Now, when you open the wallet app, tap the plus icon, driver license, and ID card and then digital ID, you now have the option to use your US passport to create a digital ID that can be used to book flights or hotels, pass through TSA checkpoints for domestic travel, open new accounts, and more. Now, just a disclaimer, as it states, TSA only accepts digital IDs for domestic flights, not international. So let me know if you're fine with putting this sensitive information on your iPhone. If you go to your notification center and haptic press the X, the clear all notifications button is now a lot more rounded, whereas before it was more rectangular. On top of that, Liquid Glass has been added to the Measure app, and it's one of the coolest looking UIs yet. So the circles are now these Liquid Glass bubbles, and it looks as if you placed a giant drop of water on your screen and are moving it around. It's super fun to play around with, and hey, maybe this could even be a new fidget. The way light reflects off Liquid Glass is just so cool, and if you tap on the screen anywhere, the background will turn red. So why is that? Well, basically the red background is for when you measure relative angles from one surface to another. Whereas if you tap again, the black background is for an absolute angle from a flat surface with a degree of zero. So you can tap the screen to go between the different modes. And if you tap fast enough, you can even activate disco mode. If you open up the games app, go to the library and tap on the hamburger menu, you can now sort your games by size. This option did not exist before. There's also now real-time challenge scores. Scores now update live, making multiplayer and competitive play a lot more engaging. And lastly, there is also improved controller navigation. So things like smoother transitions and better responsiveness for game controllers. Here you can see a list of games that are supported by controllers. And yes, I can confirm that Doodle Jump does not work with a controller. <laughs> 
Now, if we go to settings, messages, and scroll down right below send read receipts, send as text message has now been renamed to retry as text message. So just a little easier to understand. And it has also been revealed in the code of iOS 26.2 beta that Apple is bringing encrypted RCS support. So basically, if you don't know what encrypted RCS is, think security when sending messages. So here's a delivery truck analogy. So when you send a message, the delivery truck carrying the locked box is secure. So nobody can open the box while it's on the road. So basically with messages, this makes sure that no one can read your message while it's on its way across the internet or your cellular network. The reminders app now has a new splash screen. It states urgent reminders, mark a reminder as urgent and get an alarm when it's due. Auto categorize, use Apple intelligence to group related reminders into sections, suggested reminders, share to reminders and let Apple intelligence suggest to do's, follow ups and grocery items and quick reminders. Add a reminder on the go from control center or the action button on iPhone. Now, if we go into here and tap on the plus button, if we scroll down a little bit, we have a new option called urgent. So you can enable this and it automatically will set the time and alarm alongside your reminder, which is actually super helpful. So you no longer have to set an alarm separately. Freeform also has a new splash screen, introducing tables in Freeform, organize your content, arrange text, shape, photos, and more in rows and columns. Attach objects, draw a shape, photo, or other object into a cell to attach it. Flexible layout, cells automatically grow to fit content, and style your table. Choose fill colors, change border styles, and format text. So once we go into here, on the bottom toolbar, if you tap on the paperclip, there is now an option to add table. Super handy, and some people are calling Freeform one of Apple's most useful apps that was recently introduced. Now if you open up the podcast app, play a podcast and tap on the hamburger menu in the bottom right. Some podcasts will have AI generated chapters. So this makes it easier to navigate. And you guys can see on iOS 26.2 beta 2, it says automatically generated with the little magic sparkle icon. Whereas on iOS 26.2 beta 1, it just said automatically created without the little icon. Now on top of that, there will also be AI generated links. So if a link is mentioned in a podcast, it'll display over here. Again, just making it more handy. All right. Now here are some features that are not necessarily new to iOS 26.2 beta 2, but are new to iOS 26.2 in general. So to start with, if you go to settings, passwords, scroll all the way down, there's now a new option that says show excluded websites. This option is not in iOS 26.1. And once we go into here, these are websites they can add. So passwords will not be saved when signing into these websites. If you go to settings, the notifications and scroll to the very bottom, there's now a new option called enhanced safety alerts. This option is not available on iOS 26.1. Now going into here, you can enable earthquake alerts and imminent threat alerts. In emergency situations, your iPhone can receive safety alerts and broadcast them anonymously to nearby Apple devices. Network conditions may affect alert timeliness and reliability. Alerts may not be available in all regions. You can also improve alert delivery, share your approximate location with Apple to improve the timeliness and reliability of enhanced safety alerts. So I would definitely enable this toggle. Now below enhanced safety alerts, if you tap on emergency alerts, iOS 26.2 beta 2 removes the local awareness toggle. This stated that Apple can use your approximate location to improve the timeliness, accuracy, and reliability of emergency alerts received. If Bluetooth is enabled, your device may anonymously broadcast and receive alerts from nearby Apple devices. Sound familiar? Apple replaced local awareness with improved alert delivery. So that toggle is actually available now in enhanced safety alerts. Now, if you go into settings, accessibility, scroll down to audio and visual. If you scroll all the way down, it now says flash for alerts. On iOS 26.1, it was called LED flash for alerts. And going into it, on iOS 26. Point two, we now have the option to select LED flash, screen, or both. That option is missing on 26.1. iOS 26.2's code also reveals relative timing. So instead of saying 5 a.m., it'll actually say morning or afternoon or whatever term for the relative time. Now, iOS 26 just keeps on getting bouncier. And that is also the case with iOS 26.2 beta 2. If I tap and hold on my home screen to put it in jiggle mode and tap on 
on edit, iOS 26.2 Beta 2 has a lot more of a liquid and bouncier animation. And this visual enhancement is seen throughout the entire iOS. So here it is in the Apple Music app and the Photos app, which over here, it does look pretty much the same. So yeah, the animations also do seem faster, not only with the pop-up menus, but also swiping between the control center pages. And basically the entire UI seems a bit sped up. Now let's talk about iOS 26.2 known bugs and issues. So the first is with AirDrop. Devices set to everyone on iOS 26.2 Beta 1 are not discoverable by devices on iOS 26.2 Beta 2. The workaround is to update both devices to iOS 26.2 Beta 2 or ensure the devices have each other's Apple account, email, or phone number in their contacts. Another issue is that the keyboard is still not fixed. Some people are still having the keyboard mistype issue and a lot of apps still have yet to adopt the new iOS 26 keyboard. Now for some people, the app library lag when you click on the search is still not fixed. For me personally, I have never had that issue, but I know a lot of people do have that issue and it still persists in this latest beta. Some people also have an issue in control center where some of the toggles, for example, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are clipping. And when exiting out of control center, the app icons have a slight ghost effect. Again, me personally, I have not had those issues. Swiping between pages, it seems very fluid and fast. And even when swiping over to the widgets page, the lag that I showed in my last video on iOS 26.2 beta 1 is now gone. So swiping between all pages, including the widgets page, is now smooth. All right, now let's go to run a Geekbench. And the Geekbench just concluded. We have a single core score of 3,664 and a multi core score of 9,335. Whereas on the same device on beta one, I got a single core score of 3,707 and a multi-core score of 9,471. So we're getting a little lower scores, but it's pretty marginal. Okay, but overall iOS 26.2 beta two has fixed a lot of bugs. It has some enhanced visual UI changes and just feels a lot faster and fluid. Now, as for a wish list, everyone really seems to want a system-wide liquid glass lighter. I am included in that petition as well. I think it would be really cool. All right, now aside from iOS 26.2 beta 2, let's go to the Apple newsroom. So first off, we already talked about Apple introducing the digital ID for your passport, but more importantly, SpongeBob Patty Pursuit 2 launches December 4th on Apple Arcade. So if you love SpongeBob as much as I do, it's time to annoy Squidward. Apple also introduced the iPhone Pocket, a beautiful way to wear and carry iPhones. So you thought the Apple crossbody strap was overpriced? Well, the iPhone Pocket launches at $230 for a sock. All right, but jokes aside, this is a collaboration between Izzy Miyake and Apple and features a singular 3D knitted construction designed to fit any iPhone. And on a real note, she needs to fix her posture. So the iPhone Pocket will be available at select Apple Store locations beginning Friday, November 14th. And it's going to be available in eight colors, lemon, mandarin, purple, pink, peacock, sapphire, cinnamon, and black. So this is a throwback to the iPod Pocket, if you guys remember that. And the way Apple describes it is a piece of cloth. <laughs> Okay, but it is crafted in Japan. Mark my words, it's going to sell out and people are going to try to scalp it. In more news, Nintendo released a Nintendo Store app and it's available in the App Store right now. So basically, Nintendo Store is a free app for browsing Nintendo systems, accessories, games, and merchandise. So if you are a Nintendo geek like I am, this app is made for you. So you can browse through Nintendo Switch, physical and digital games, accessories, other Nintendo products and make purchases directly through the app. You can keep up to date with all the latest info on games. So turn on notifications if you choose to do so. You can even add items to your wish list, review your play activity, check in at events and Nintendo stores. So yeah, the Nintendo store seems like a all-in-one hub. Go ahead and download it from the app store. I'll link it down below. Okay. And lastly, this is not a new feature, but if you bring down control center and turn off Wi-Fi and cellular and you tap on this tile at the very bottom, a 
a satellite option pops up. Tap into here and now we're in a satellite connection demo. It says to try connecting to a satellite, make sure you're outside. You can use a satellite connection when Wi-Fi and cellular aren't available. So we are entering the future. Satellite functionality is limited to certain apps, including Apple messages, maps, weather, music, compass, and fitness. It's not meant to be a substitute for cellular data as the speeds are significantly slower. It's just best used for essential functions when you're completely off the grid. Carriers like T-Mobile are going to offer a satellite plan where users can send and receive data from specific apps when you do not have a traditional cellular signal. So although it has limited capability, it's still cool that we will be able to get connectivity through satellites in areas where cellular towers cannot reach. And future versions of this may allow for more natural usage, meaning you may not have to manually hold your phone up to connect to a satellite. Satellite may also come with 5G non-terrestrial network support, but this will probably be in future iPhone models. That's crazy. So first we had 3G, then 4G, then 5G, and now satellite. All right, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think of iOS 26.2 beta 2 down below. And will you be buying the iPhone Pocket? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? If you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe for more. This is Everyday iTech signing out.